Hi guys, it's Miss Griffin. We're taking a look at Unit 9, Skill 3, Cavalier's Principle. And our essential question for today says, how can Cavalier's Principle be used and applied to explain volumes? So we'll get to the principle in just a second, but I want to show you a quick little picture. This is Sir um, Bonaventura Cavalier. This is the cool mathematician that came up with this principle. And I want to show you a live example of the principle, and then we'll talk about why it works, how it works, and how it can be used to explain equal volumes. So stay tuned. Okay, so you see how there's these textbooks here, these environmental science, science explorer. These are textbooks of Mr. Oliveri sitting here in my classroom. And I want to explain to you how to use Cavalier's principle to talk about how stacks of these books can have equal volumes, even if the stacks are disheveled, meaning no longer in a straight stack, maybe disheveled like this. So you can see this textbook, nice, beautiful, pretty, green. It's just a regular textbook, nice and thin. And when I come over here, I've stacked them into a pile of 12 because today is April 12th, which is my birthday and happens to be my favorite number. Pretty cool that I was born on the same day as my favorite number, right? So you can count them, stack of 12 books. Beautiful. And they are all the same. I didn't adjust them or modify them in any way. But if you look, I also have another stack of 12 here. And I use a little bit of physics to make this the Leaning Tower of Science books. And so I'm wondering, is the volume of this stack equal to the volume of this stack? I have 12 books in each. Count them up if you don't believe me. Pause the video. And every single book is the same exact size, right? Like I said, I didn't modify them in any way. I didn't cut off any portion of the book. Same depth, same width, same height. So if I stack a bunch of books on top of one another that have the same area in the face of the book, meaning this section, and I stack a bunch of them up high, the base area, the bottom area of this book is the same as the bottom area of this book. There are 12 books high on each stack. If we think about volume, volume is base area times height. In terms of a rectangular prism like this one, base area is length times width, and then we multiply by the height to get the volume. Length times width times height. I can do the same thing over here, it's just a little goofy. Length times width times height of 12 books. This one also has a height of 12 books. So if I have the same height, up and down, 12 books, I have the same base area, the area of the bases are the same, then the volume of the two stacks must be equal. If you see Mr. Oliveri in the hallways, thank him for allowing me to use his science textbooks, which he has no idea is happening right now. Hopefully that helps you recognize how these volumes are the same. Okay, so hopefully that little video helped you to understand why volumes are equal um, when we have the same height and the same base area. So Cavalieri's principle says this, if two solids have the same height and the area of the bases are equal, with every plane, that's what I was talking about earlier, the cross sections, every plane parallel to the base, then the volumes of the two solids must be equal. So here we have this crazy picture. We have a rectangular prism, like we started with the textbooks. We have a tilted rectangular prism. Um, it's not called a tilted rectangular prism. It's and then we have this curvy rectangular prism. But notice in every single one of them, the height is still h. Okay, they didn't indicate it on every one of them. Maybe you want to indicate that here. Height is h, height is h. The height of every single one of them is the same. And then I have this base. And I'm going to choose to outline this in blue on every single one of them. This base is always a by b, a by b. A by B. So if I were to find the area of those bases, length times width, it would always be A times B. Length times width, in this case, is A times B. So we know that volume is equal to length times width times height, and we know that length times width is A times B times height. And in every single one of them, it's times h, because h is the height of every one of them. So that means that the volume of every single one of these um, prisms is the same, because they have the same height, 
and they have equal base area. Okay, so we're going to take a look at two examples and then you'll be able to practice. This video is going to be pretty quick. Looking at the stack of chordates below, what do we know about their volumes and explain why? So first off, you want to count the quarters. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven quarters. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the height is equal to seven. And when I think about quarters, I know that quarters are round and they have a face on them and they're worth 25 cents. Right? Every single quarter is the same, theoretically. The area of every circular quarter is the same. So that means the area of the top base is the same as the area of this top base. The area of the third quarter is the same as the area of the third quarter here. The area of the seventh quarter is the same as the area of the seventh quarter there. So that means that since the stacks have equal height in parentheses I'm going to write seven quarters and equal base area equal height equal base area that means the volumes must be equal. And this is exactly what Bonaventura Cavalieri told us a long, 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 long time ago. If you have equal heights, equal base area, the volumes must be equal. Because again, the basic formula for volume is area of the base times height. I'm just going to write area of the base for that big B. In the case of quarters, it would be pi r squared, because that's the area of a circle, times its height of 7. And so hopefully that makes sense to you based on the book example we saw, the live video, as well as the quarter stack. But we've got one more to look at. Okay, so here we have a Regents exam problem. It was question 27, meaning it's a two-point question on a Regents. And it says the diagrams below show two figures. One figure... Um, is a right triangular prism and the other one is oblique triangular prism. So it's just like we saw with the quarters where they were stacked up making a right angle with the ground versus where they were stacked up making an oblique shape, tilted essentially. And it says the base of figure A has a height of 5 and a length of 8. So you can see this triangular base, height of 5, length of 8. And the height of prism A is 14, so height of the actual prism is 14. The base of figure B has a height of 8 and a length of 5, so it's just the reversed dimensions for figure B's base, but it also still has an overall height of 14. And it says, use Cavalieri's principle to explain why the volumes of these two triangular prisms are equal. So we want to make sure that these volumes are equal. And remember that we've got this like checklist, essentially, of how to get equal volumes. So equal volumes if we can check off these boxes. First we can say that they have equal base area. And sometimes you might have to calculate that. And then also if we can say they have equal height. So let's look at our base areas. We've got this base here that's a triangle and this base here that is a triangle. So thankfully we have two triangles here. If we didn't, we would have to um, think about the area of something other than a triangle. So, sorry, my pen's not working right here. Area of a triangle equals half base height. And so when we're calculating the area of triangle A, we have one half times the base, which in this case is eight. Times the height of the triangle, which is five. And so we can calculate this, it's eight times five and then cut that in half, so that would be 20. And then we find the area of the triangle on this side because we need the area of both bases to be equal. 
and in this case the base length of the triangle was 5 and the height of the triangle was 8. Now if you notice we're going to get the same answer because multiplying it doesn't matter the order in which you do so. 5 times 8 is the same thing as 8 times 5. So it's a good thing that our areas are equal to each other because that allows us to check off the equal base area. And then I'm looking at the heights of the triangular prisms themselves and they're both 14, so that means they have equal height, and therefore we must have equal volume. So Cavalier's principle allows us to say the volumes are equal because they have equal base area and equal height. The prisms must have equal volumes because the base areas are equal and the heights are equal. And if you want to, you can put in that the height was 14 and that the base areas we're both 20, that's totally fine, but you have to have this work up here in order to justify your response. And again, we have equal volume because the base areas are equal and the heights are equal. What I want to mention is that in this problem, the area here, if you put units on it, say it said feet, this area would be feet squared. And then this height would just be feet if these were in feet. Um, I want to make sure that if you're going to try to put units on it, then it has to make sure that it matches with whatever the units would be based on the dimension. So area is always squared, and then just the regular um, height, a 2D dimension, is just the regular length, feet. So let's take a look at this practice problem here. Um, one thing I want to point out, too, is that it gives you a bunch of different heights for figure B. It tells you that you have the slant height. Slant height is the diagonal height. The slant height of this object is 5 feet in comparison to the actual height, which is perpendicular to the base, of 4 feet. So I want you to make sure that you are using the height of 4 feet in this problem when you are using Cavalier's principle to explain the volumes, uh, not the stack of crackers, of these um, two figures are equal. We had changed this problem last year, and it didn't change in my video. That's why I have handwriting here. Okay, so try your practice problem, pause it, hit play when you're ready to see the answer. All right, so I've got my answer here. It says the volumes are equal because the prisms have equal base area, 12 feet squared, and equal height, 4 feet. Notice that you'll see my work to finding the area on both of these rectangular prisms. Um, for the base, remember that if you have a rectangular base, the area is equal to the length times the width. Okay, so I calculated the area on both sides. I said the volumes are equal because they have equal base area and equal height. Also notice my units. If you are choosing to write them in, you have to make sure they're proper, just as I mentioned with the previous problem. Go ahead and practice. Make sure you do all problems, please. And then... Get working on your CFU once you show your teacher your summary and your practice problems. Adios.